Here are eight tips for emotional well-being when living alone during coronavirus. Hey, these are unprecedented times for many of us around the world. And if you work from home or you're unemployed right now, and if you're like me and you live alone, yet you are physically distancing yourself to help protect yourself and protect others because we don't know who is carrying the virus or not, you may be finding yourself rather isolated and lonely and feeling really disconnected from what makes you happy in the world. So I've got eight tips for you to help keep you more grounded and connected. First, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom with your friends. This is so much more powerful than texting or even a phone call because you get to see their faces, you get to see their expressions, you get to see their smiles, you get to laugh together and lament together about everything that's going on. It really makes a powerful difference. Do it one-on-one -on -one or do it with a group. Hell, I got a group of friends this week and we are gonna try to play Cards Against Humanity with five of us over Zoom. So, fingers crossed. If you are like me, you might have piles of books laying around your house that you've been meaning to get to. Take a book, start an online book club, start a Facebook group, start messaging with others about the characters and the plot and what you're enjoying, not enjoying. Maybe set up a meeting for online in a few weeks when you're all gonna have the book read and you can actually meet on Zoom, again, Skype, FaceTime, whatever, and chat about it. And maybe you've got a pile of nonfiction books like I do, just go pick up one of those books one a day, pick up a random one, open to any page, and just start reading for five minutes. And if you feel like that's not what you're supposed to do with books, good. Break some rules. Give yourself permission to make up some new rules. Number three, choose one friend or family member each day you think might be struggling right now and reach out to them for some connection, for some laughter, for some emotional support, or just reach out to somebody that you missed and you want to know how they're doing. Research shows that we are altruistic as humans, it's wired into us. And when we pause and worry less about ourselves and take the time to reach out and help others, we end up, fe we end up feeling better and they end up feeling better. All right, number four. What is something that you have always wanted to do you just haven't had the time to do? Learning Spanish, start jogging, watching documentaries, meditating, daily push-ups, start writing your book. Just start doing it. Now, I don't mean to put a ton of pressure on yourself because I know some folks are doing it, but do block off little amounts of time, five minutes every morning to start meditating, five minutes every day to just start writing your story. Don't put pressure on yourself. No. Number five, make sure you get outside. Go for walks if you can, enjoy nature, look around you, take deep breaths in, get fresh air, see other people, albeit from a distance. Go for a walk and listen to podcasts. Those folks will keep you company. I listen to a ton of podcasts and they are kind of my best friends sometimes. So physical movement and exercise is a really important part of our, our mental, emotional, and physical health, obviously. So, you know, you want to keep six feet away from people. I know in some crowded areas that might be more difficult, but get creative and get out there and move some. All right, number six. Oh my gosh, take social media and technology breaks. That is our main source of connecting with other people right now, but ah, it can get overwhelming. So pause, hide your phone somewhere, turn it off, organize your sock drawer, read a book, do push-ups, anything else than uh, the overwhelming pace and chatter of social media. Give yourself a break. All right, number seven, I love this one. Choose five of your favorite songs, get them lined up, have a dance party. Do it in front of a mirror. The more ridiculous you dance and move, the better it is. Nobody's watching. Give yourself permission to be crazy. And number eight, finally, be kind to yourself. Remember, you are not alone, even though it may feel that way sometimes. This roller coaster of emotions and anxiety and fear and uncertainty and confusion and hopelessness and anger. There are so many people in your community, in your neighborhood, and around the world who are feeling those exact same feelings. So see if you can evoke a sense of warmth and compassion and kindness toward them, and then extend that same compassion and warmth and kindness to yourself in your struggles. So Dr. Den, signing off here. 
Uh, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, and give yourself a big hug right now. All right, ciao.